thing actually on now? Yes, it is. Well, hello world. Hi. Uh, so this is the, um, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm Paul, this is Brent, this is Mike. Uh, we, uh, we made this fun little game called the Grand Theft Artifact. The idea is to, uh, um, well, basically steal an artifact and uh, escape a sort of hidden military base without getting discovered. So it's kind of a bit of intrigue, a bit of spy stuff. It's, uh, it's kind of fun. So let's pull up our slides here. So um, yeah, you can see this is sort of, uh, it's actually uh, set up in, uh, in Cinema 5. So it's actually a really big venue. Like most games are of a scale that's sort of meant for your living room kind of, kind of thing or your PC or on your desk type of thing. Uh, this is meant to be like big, like really big. Like, you know, they, they talk with, um, uh, uh, you know, but the Wii, you know, the wild mechanics, you know, you sort of move around like this and it feels like you're playing tennis like that. Yeah, but you're, you're adding some, some element of sort of um, disbelief to it there. What we wanted to do is uh, flip that on its head so you are actually doing something physical in an environment. Um, so you can see here we're actually uh, trying to get the user to navigate past lasers by sort of sneaking around it, sort of like um, in uh, the movie Entrapment or Mission Impossible or one of these types of things. So these are the kind of concepts that we're going to the project with. Um, here we had, you know, laser tripwires, obviously. Uh, uh, you're sneaking around any base. You know, sort of like this, this, this cheesy 60s uh, sort of spy movie vibe kind of thing because it, you know, felt like sort of like a low budget kind of thing. So we're like, hey, why not uh, take full advantage of that? So you can see there's lots and lots of, you know, duct tape uh, everywhere in the actual game. So, um, and we actually um, got pretty far with uh, making uh, doors that open, which was a really cool element. We really like to have that in there. Uh, we had to cut that short, um, unfortunately, in the past 24 hours. And um, you can blame our sort of lack of sleep for that. Um, uh, yeah, so th part of the concept was also to um, uh, make the game feel very immersive in the sense that you're, you're, you're trying to pretend to be something else. It's not like you're, you know, Sam Fisher from... Uh, Splinter Cell or something. You, like you, the player, are bringing yourself into the game, uh, and so you personally are the agent, kind of thing. And lasers, always with the lasers. Uh, so actually, we couldn't have lasers, um, but we <laughs> managed to find a way around that. Uh, we found out rather late in the project that we um, couldn't do that, so we uh, improvised with a bunch of different ideas. Um, we tried um, glow-in-the-dark paint on string in place of lasers. We thought that was kind of cool, but maybe not quite as cool as it could have been. So we actually settled on uh, electroluminescent uh, wire, which um, you can see it as it's um, set up in the next room. It actually looks really cool in the dark. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've got this little gizmo to detect whether uh, the um, uh, you've actually hit the, 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 the laser, it's uh, the, um, the wire, you actually knock it off and it falls to the ground, um, which may or may not actually work at this moment, but use your imagination. Just suspend disbelief and imagine that part actually sort of works. Um, so one of the things that we learned was to um, just, just to use what you have available. There's a lot of improvisation that happens in, uh, and, and um, uh, iteration that happens uh, when you're doing uh, game development, game design. So when you're doing hardware-based stuff, uh, it's not always possible to have you know, the most um, you know, incredible technology available to you, even if that is just sort of like, you know, a steel framework or something. Uh, so we actually improvised with a lot of stuff. Here we've got wood and steel with a, a wooden base, and later we finally settled on um, uh, a big steel fencing post. So we've got a lot of fencing left over, um, if anybody wants a fence built. Um, and like these big concrete blocks and stuff, which are really, really heavy and uh, obnoxiously large, to, uh, heavy to move around. So. We had some difficulty with that. Um, and again, we've got the lasers, we've got the, um, uh, uh, the door that sort of like fell from the ceiling and rolled itself back up. And yeah, it's, it's, there, there's some, you have to roll with the punches because you know, what you want may not necessarily exist and it's, you, you know, can't quite invent everything. You, you try to, but you can't quite do everything there. So basically that's, that's, that's our game in, in, in a nutshell. Um, and I apologize for Mike for that awful photo there because it's, it's like a Lord of the Rings character. Um, sorry, man. <laughs> uh, so on the interest of time, uh, can we uh, open up to your questions? Can you guys maybe just tell us a little bit, what made you to decide to go with this sort of whole body gameplay approach? 
Where did that come from as, you know, when you're bringing together hardware people and software people? I'm wondering how, how did your, did the, where was the, dis, the software game developer sort of part of this discussion? How did you guys come to this conclusion or this sort of pathway for your project? Um, actually, uh, it's, I've, I've had interest in this for a very long time. Uh, it's something that I, I, I feel strongly that, you know, uh, the games don't have to be limited to the way that um, they simply exist now. It's, it's a medium that's always in flux. It is an art form. It is a sport, as you know, Hebert says. It's, 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 it's a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's certainly not restricted in any sense. Um, there was a lot of innovation that happened, obviously, in the 70s and the 80s when, you know, the golden age of computers were or the golden age of gaming, where a lot of innovation was happening, where people were creating uh, hardware and the software together. Like say, you know, two guys would b build, you know, pole position. You know, so one guy's working on the, the, the driving mechanics, the, the actual hardware, and one guy's working on the software and the graphics and the sound. Um, and we're seeing a lot of that sort of come around again now with the iPhone, like small dev teams. But that innovation in hardware isn't necessarily happening now because everyone's like, well, there's all these marketplaces now that are well established. So the idea is to just once in a while just say, look, it's a hell with the current marketplace. Try something totally different. And uh, full body motion mechanic type games are a sort of an untapped territory. So um, you, know, you try it with the Kinect, you try it with, with the Wii, but these are very heavy handed sort of uh, hacks. A lot of good smoke and mirrors behind them, but they're not really super immersive. If you catch my drift. So there's a lot of innovation to happen here. So I just wanted to poke around with that. But personally, that's why I like this kind of thing. All right. Well, I've seen the room lit up with the magical lights, and um, maybe we're going to say thanks because it's a really great answer. This sort of the searching for exploration, I think, was a really important part of this peripheral initiative to bring together communities that might not already be speaking to each other. And I think um, this project that's going to put people in their bodies in the game space um, is going to really challenge people to think about uh, where it is we want to play. So many thanks to the three of you and. Uh, We'll see you guys up on the third floor for sure.